Here's what uh, the greater wax moth looks like. You can see the actual larva. Uh, it can be different sizes. As it ages, it gets larger. But it just begins to work its way into a hive. And it will take over rapidly. As you can see down in the wall of the colony as well. This is just a little small mating nook uh, that the bees kind of abandoned. And they got too small. And you can see how this is just being taken over. Now, one of the things I want to show you about the wax moth is their webbing. A couple of things. Their webbing and the little cocoons that they make in the wood itself. And uh, if you've, you're not a beekeeper until you have experienced this kind of um, problem in your beehive. The, you can see the webbing, how it, it's all throughout the comb now. And it's full of not only the webbing, but it's also full of where the larvae have defecated. And uh, it's also full of eggs. And here you can see smaller larvae that's not really very big yet. It's just they're smaller. And uh, a, lot, a lot of times the little black droppings, uh, let me show you some up in here. This is evidence of the um, greater wax moth droppings defecating here, the little black. So when you see this, this is definitely wax moth in the hive. Now I want to show you one more thing. And you can see how they make their little cocoons uh, over here. There's a good one right there. And a lot of times these are down into the wood a little bit and that when you scrape them off, they leave a little mark in the wood itself. Let me show you. Probably right here if I were to pull this off it will leave a little indentation uh, right there in the wood and here are some more up in this area you just scrape those off and as we scrape them off you can see now the wood is it's got uh, indentations from these cocoons that have burrowed down into the wood same with uh, over in this area here, scrape them out. Now, I want you to be a good beekeeper and not let this happen. This happens because your hive kind of gets weak and small. And a strong colony will keep the wax moths out, but a weak colony will let them take over. Become smart too at knowing the difference between wax moth larva and the small hive beetle larva. They are different and you need to see them side by side so that you can make sure one is not the other. There you go, wax moth damage. And I do want you to read our website. I have a whole lesson on how to clean these frames up. The simplest way is to freeze them and reuse them. You just want to kill your, the wax moth eggs. Uh, in this case, after I have frozen this particular comb here I would just put it back into a hive and let them take over and clean the rest of it up I wouldn't worry about it strong colonies do a great job at defending off the wax moth but be aware these wax moths can kill a strong colony fishermen love the greater wax moth larva for bait and so it's their friend but the beekeeper it's our foe so in this video, I want to describe the wax moth activity in the hive, what to do with the hive when you see it, and uh, what, what you can do to keep it from happening. So let's first talk about wax moth in the hive. A strong colony does well to kill the wax moth. They won't let the uh, eggs develop into larvae, they, and they, sometimes they even keep the moth from flying in. And so they prevent the wax moth from taking over. But this is not the case with a weak colony. When a colony becomes small and weak, that's when the colony begins to be uh, taken over by wax moths. So a wax moth is flying around at night, dodging car headlights, and finally flies into our apiary. Attaches uh, itself uh, to the comb by, it's, it's drawn into the comb by the smell of a hive, so it comes into a colony. And when it comes in, it flies past the guards and it begins to lay eggs uh, in the comb and or around the, the hive in the boxes where the bees can't get to it. 
and she begins to lay her eggs usually uh, about uh, four to ten days after she emerges and she'll lay between 300 and 600 eggs. Wax moth larvae can actually leave a hive, walk upwards of 150 feet away and crawl into another hive. Once the larva, uh, once it's in this larva stage, it tunnels its way through comb and it um, sometimes can actually kill brood because it binds it under the, the webbing and the, and the egg can't get out. But as it's going through comb, it's eating pollen and honey and sometimes even eats beeswax. The um, wax moth prefers darker comb. So one of the things you can do is kind of change out your comb more frequently. But uh, they prefer this darker comb in the hive. They finally spin cocoons after they've been a larva. They spin cocoon about 19 days later. These cocoons burrow into the wood slightly and once removed, they'll leave a small indentation that you saw in our previous video. Well, what do you do when you see that your hive is infected with wax moth? The damage can be mild to severe. It can be one frame, it can be the entire hive. It looks worse than it really is. That's the good news. You can see wax moth droppings in the webbing, and uh, the webbing sometimes um, makes the frames difficult to separate. When you first see the wax moth in your hive, uh, you know that your hive was weak and it could not defend itself against the wax moth. So perhaps your hive became queenless and the populations dropped and so that's why wax moths snuck in. Little can be done once the wax moth has taken over your colony. These bees will eventually leave and you'll be left with bad looking comb. But look, don't despair. Fortunately, you can kill the larva and you can kill the eggs by freezing your comb and reusing them. Uh, if you will freeze your comb at 20 degrees Fahrenheit for about five hours, you will kill all stages of the wax moth in the comb. You only have to freeze it for about two hours at five degrees. Here in Illinois, we have winter working for us, and so we leave our boxes out, our comb stacked up, and allow the winter to take care of all the wax moth that we see. Your best control against wax moth is to keep a strong colony. Be careful not to place too many empty boxes on a colony. They can still be strong, but if you allow too much space, the wax moth can slip past the front door, get up into the top of it where there's not a lot of bees, and she can lay her eggs. Keep your hive uh, tight, a lot of bees, don't leave extra space. This is good to prevent small hive beetle as well. A lot of people sell comb honey, and sometimes comb honey can contain the eggs or the little tiny larva of wax moth. And so you can understand that this can be a problem if you're gonna sell your comb honey, and all at once you realize in a warm environment, once you've sold it, the eggs can turn into larva, and now your customer sees something crawling around in their comb honey. This is not good. What you should do is freeze the comb honey before you sell it, and that way you can alleviate any problems with the uh, wax moth being there. Also, let me talk about uh, mothballs. Uh, in the old days, I was taught to stack your honeycombs up, throw some mothballs in there, and the, bee and the moth wouldn't affect it during the storage time. It is not uh, acceptable any longer to use uh, mothballs in your comb like that. You would have to use something like para moth balls. Uh, para moth, I think it's called. Uh, Paradichlorobenzene is the PDB. It's the more acceptable fumigant for use with corm, uh, comb uh, that you're storing in stacks in your storage buildings. Use that, don't use moth balls. So I hope you've enjoyed our video about uh, wax moths and I hope this has been educational for you. And check us out online for more information at honeybeesonline.com. I'm David Burns from Long Lane Honeybee Farms in Central Illinois, thanking you for joining us today.